we will start to piece together the importance of the switch bite scenarios that we have been talking about, especially when you have multiple attackers in your home. the traditional method of this deep overcommitted bite the dog is doing a great job but can you see where we have a problem now so the dog is committed in the bite the second intruder has access to injuring the dog the homeowner is isolated um, the dog is locked on which is what typically people are encouraging um, and it's going to get hurt and so will the, the, the homeowner we'll show you another way someone's going to have to take a bite today so you need to distract the dog. I know there's a dog in there. Distract the dog. Get him to come out the window. Yeah, man. We'll go in and get the girl, yeah? yeah easy. Fucking do it. Easy. Okay, so great news. The dog is doing incredibly well. He's doing his job. He has passionately gone after the intruder. Um, that's what the intruder wanted. They wanted to divert the dog's attention. Now, the homeowner is exposed. The dog is battling outside. Because this dog has gone through this logical training of spatial awareness, when it hears its owner screaming, it's aware that there is something going on that is inherently negative and potentially life-threatening. And it's aware of this and able to redirect its uh, skill and pressure and redirect a bite to, to potentially save the owner's life. The spatial awareness of uh, immediate threat is critical. Um, this dog is now engaged in the uh, profile of training. He understands that the handler defense is absolute. He must engage and re-engage. What we're looking for, remember, a bite on a naked arm is going to cripple a naked arm. It's only because you're watching uh, role plays with bite suits. You know, at the very least, we're looking for DNA. So, you know, if the homeowner is hurt, we have enough DNA for the police to be able to follow up investigative lines to actually arrest these perpetrators. Ah! 